Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today sitting down to talk about Nintendo. Yes, quite the change of pace here. You know, we have Xbox at the top of the coverage list, PlayStation occasionally gets it here, and then, yeah, Nintendo, bottom of the barrel, rarely sees the light of day here on Mr. Maddie. Why is that, you may be wondering? Well, in all transparency, the videos about Nintendo rarely get views here, but if you know me, most of the time that doesn't matter, even though that's my career. Uh, because, quite frankly, look at my Life and Death of Dead Space video. Like, it's a huge passion project, tons of skits, half hour plus video almost. And, uh, yeah, it flopped, but I did it because I really love the series. So, I'll just talk about stuff when I want to, but more importantly here is the latter point of why I don't talk about Nintendo. Is I feel like a lot of the YouTube scene surrounding Nintendo marks out for literally everything they ever do. Any announcement, any reveal, everything's all good. And I think it's because Nintendo has a lot of nostalgia factor for a ton of people out there and it masks a lot of their current issues so while nintendo gets progressively worse in my eyes the games they're releasing which some are good many of them are huge misses i feel do end up masking the problems they have today in fact you may be wondering well maddie you don't cover nintendo here but you review some of their channels over on retro rebound well the truth is i'm not a part of their stupid ambassador program i buy the games with my own money as i do for all of my reviews and I don't glow up all of the Nintendo games. There are ones that I really liked, such as Triangle Strategy, but I took a dookie on Mario Strikers. That game is awful, in my opinion. Not mechanically, but content-wise, they sold it as a skeleton, and we'll be talking about Mario Strikers in this video, because the core of this conversation is Nintendo literally doesn't care about you, and I don't know what else to call this video other than just a wake-up call. And so that's why I wanted to put the point of the video right there in the title. It's there in front of you. You can click and leave if you wanted to, but if you want to learn more about how they don't care about you, I got you covered and i'm sure many of you are aware of the stupid things nintendo does but to me one of their announcements that they made earlier this year had resurfaced with a brand new date that you should all be aware of of when they are closing the 3ds and wii u shop and then on top of that we're going to talk about mario strikers the problem with current nintendo games and why they managed to get away with so much of this stuff so if you're new here i'd love to say if you're into nintendo conversations consider subscribing but you're in the wrong place if you like that type of stuff we talk about nintendo games on the occasion at retro rebound you could check that out but otherwise we're just talking about the future of gaming and really game preservation here and if you're into that stuff whenever it pops up i'm here here talking about it because I'm very passionate about it and yes this will be also a wake-up call to people who may not care about Nintendo but when you really hype up a company constantly the damage it can do long term so to the people say gassing up Phil Spencer and their team saying they do no wrong I'm with you there's a reason I cover a lot of Xbox here is because despite their issues I think they're trending upwards but their issue with DRM currently standing now is abysmal and they need to figure it out. It's not good for game preservation, and it's not okay just because they have Game Pass that they can go down that pathway. So keep that in mind as we discuss these topics, and now for the starting point of this entire conversation. Nintendo has confirmed the closing date for when the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U eShops will close down. Now, at face value, this may not seem like a big deal. The Nintendo Switch is a very popular console. These are much older, so they're going to sunset these services to focus on the Nintendo Switch. I made a video talking about this on Retro Rebound on why this was an issue, but quite honestly, that felt more like a Mr. Matty video, so I don't know why I didn't post it here, but we're, we're writing the wrong now. So in this post Nintendo made, they were really justifying the idea behind closing down these storefronts as, well, we're providing a lot of great services over on the Nintendo Switch, that being Nintendo Switch Online. And this is where my number one issue comes in, which is effectively bullying your customers into paying for backwards compatibility. Nintendo was a leader when you looked at the Wii with Virtual Console and what was offered there and the ability to pick out games and buy them and own them. That was wonderful. It was all just on one nice SD card. However, now when you take a look at things, it's very different. They've gotten rid of all that. They're gradually adding systems to a evolving online service as they milk money from you month after month. And while Nintendo Switch Online isn't that expensive where some people our understanding of it, you'd be kidding yourself if you thought Nintendo didn't know that and it's why they're stretching this whole process out. And it's very frustrating as a customer and someone who really likes their games to watch this all unfold. So they've confirmed that the date that the 3DS and Wii U shop closing will be March of 2023. At that point in time, yes, you will be able to re-download old games, for example, but you'll not be able to take any money, whether it be a prepaid card or a credit card of your own, and go on the eShop and download anything. They're just taking it down. And I wish they would walk this back, but they're clearly not going to, again, because I think so many people hype them up 
that they can sort of bury their heads in the sand, weather the storm, and move on. And I don't feel like there's been enough pressure from any outlets to say this should be a decision that is overall reversed. I know it may not seem like the biggest deal for many, but when you're now only standing back compat options for Nintendo are hitting the physical game market, which is ridiculously overpriced at this point in time. Now, it has been overpriced since the pandemic, but Nintendo stuff, just go look up GameCube games. There are GameCube games that outright suck that are worth hundreds of dollars just because there's no other way to play them. And Nintendo profits off of this artificial scarcity. It's funny, right? Because when you hear that, you go, well, how do they make money off a game being scarcely available if people are selling it on eBay for hundreds of dollars? Well, the reality is you get something like Mario 3D All-Stars, which you have a shotgun blast of sales because for some reason Nintendo said we couldn't keep that up for sale for longer than a couple of months. It's moments like that, again, where I'm telling you Nintendo doesn't care about you. They care about making their games and their hardware and so on and so forth artificially scarce so there's a rarity there's an excitement around their product i gotta get in get this now like the amiibos i gotta get in i gotta get this now and it's a rush it's an excitement and it's great for content creation right it's a ecosystem they're gaming everyone and it's really fascinating to watch so this is where the conversation starts for me is seeing how they're treating the nintendo switch online program as the understandable substitute for backwards compatibility. When the library is limited, a lot of the Nintendo editions have been kind of whack. It's really been Sega hard carrying it. And overall, to me, two can exist at once. I can choose to be a part of that subscription service, or you could do what PlayStation Plus is doing and make it where I could buy those classics. I think that's fair for everyone involved. And again, Nintendo would make some coin off of that, so I don't know why they don't do that. Again, though, connecting to that nostalgia factor, why they get away with this, it's because they continue to recycle the same brands we've seen for generations in and out. And it's funny, right? Because when I host Defining Duke, a question we commonly get is about, you know, could Xbox bring back Banjo, for example? Could they bring back Death Row? Could they bring back Killer Instinct? There's a lot of calls for Xbox to bring certain things back. And I think that's because when you look at their current stable of games, Halo, Gears, Forza, right? They've been around for generations. So it's expected that they bring other things around from prior generations. Whereas for Nintendo, that's all they've been. Rarely do we see a brand new IP, like Splatoon is the first one that really comes to mind to me, that's injected into their ecosystem. Otherwise, yeah, it's your Mario, your Mario sports games, Zelda. Now they're doing Zelda remasters, so on and so forth. You can kind of predict the template and we're starting to see Metroid slowly come back. It's like they've been doing the same thing for years upon years upon years. The reason it's exciting is because people are familiar with it. And it's the point now where people were even excited about Mario Strikers. And if you pick up and play that game mechanically, it's pretty sound. I would even say the AI is relatively broken in that game, however. But also, what a content barren game. Nintendo has moved into an area now that I think is dangerous because they're so comfortable, which is selling you skeletons of games and putting the meat on it later. I will admit, one of my favorite games of last year was Mario Golf Super Rush. In fact, my brother, his girlfriend, and I, because again, I'm, I'm laid up with a back issue right now, so I'm scarcely moving. We played about six, seven hours of Mario Golf yesterday. Fun game, but even more fun now because they added a lot of new golfers to the roster. They added a ton of new courses, so every time I've hopped in, it's almost like a pseudo live service game. It's like, oh, there's new updates. I had like three courses that unlocked. I had two golfers that unlocked. I had some solo challenges that unlocked. I'm like, oh, you know, it's brought life to the game again. But the reality is, even though I really liked Mario Golf in its most bare bones state, the reality is, and the reason why I didn't crack that list is I knew Nintendo could have done more. And I think Mario Strikers is a sign that Nintendo understood, oh yeah, we can really get away with this, can't we? And Nintendo releases Mario Strikers, and when I say this is one of the most barren products I have had the displeasure of purchasing, I am not a guy who is an uproared customer and I go out and I return things. I have never regretted a digital purchase more in my life because I played it for an hour and a half, I felt like I saw everything, I shut it down, and I haven't opened it since. Like, this game is extremely disappointing. There is nothing there. You can see everything it has in a mere moment. And it's because now, as we record today, July 19th, Nintendo's added a free update. Daisy's in the game, Shy Guy's in the game, a new stadium's in the game. They're taking that Mario Golf path where every month you're going to see a new stadium. And it's why in my review over on Retro Rebound, I said, 
look at this game around Black Friday when it's on sale and when there's a number of updates, it may be worth your time then. But Nintendo has caught on to the fact that they can get away with these things. And we're already going to see them start dipping into their back catalog again. Remember, there's still Advance Wars 1 and 2 Remake in development has yet to release. It was supposed to come out this year, but due to the war in Ukraine, Nintendo's claiming that they didn't want to release it during that time and felt it was insensitive, so they're going to release it later. It's interesting because people were able to actually get the game early because something went wrong with the eShop and folks had played the game and yeah, it was in a playable state in its entirety. But also, now we're seeing Camelot update their website to feature brand new Golden Sun art. And a lot of people have been calling for Golden Sun to come back. And that's kind of the cycle that's worked for Nintendo is regurgitating relatively the same franchises while reinventing them. You look at Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, I don't want to do them disrespect. They are good games. And it's an issue of trying to separate the games from the company that sort of runs them and makes that machine work where you inject these surprises, these very rare surprises like, oh, Golden Sun's back. And it's just they got their finger on the pulse on how to continuously get away with decisions like this where I think this is a company that very blatantly doesn't care about its customers and of course like any public company they owe their shareholders and they need to focus on that stuff and recurrent revenue is a way of securing that but I feel like a lot of their things are excused away due to nostalgia and maybe I just have the benefit of saying you know when I grew up and I always talk about the GameCube people talk about Wind Waker they talk about Smash Bros Melee which I was pretty familiar with they talk about F-Zero, so on and so forth, right? These classic Nintendo franchises. But for me, what do I talk about? Uh, Naruto Clash of Ninja, the exclusive GameCube fighting game for Naruto. I talk about Rogue Galaxy, the exclusive GameCube Starfighter game. I talk about those types of games. So I have the weird benefit, if you will, of like when I talk about the Game Boy Advance SP, people talk about, oh, Mario World was great. I'm like, I was playing Mega Man Battle Network while people were talking about Pokemon. So maybe I just had the benefit of being an outsider and avoiding all that. I don't know what that built-in bias is necessarily like. Uh, but to me, I feel like even if you love Nintendo, you can't help but look at them today and see they're clearly taking advantage of their customers. And while, again, Nintendo stuff doesn't do well here, I figured it's probably worth just shooting the conversation out there anyway, just to inject it into the cycle of people kind of getting amped up for stuff. I'm not here trying to disgrace anyone who makes purchases, because look, at the end of the day, I do give Nintendo my money when I buy a game for review. They do get it. But for me, I'm not trying to justify it, but at least my idea is if this game sucks, I can steer more people away from it than guiding them toward it. It's always up to you at the end of the day. I don't want anyone to feel bad for enjoying Nintendo games because for the most part, they do make fun games. And I think that's what makes it really tough for people to admit that this company kind of sucks. But again, seeing what's happened with the eShop, how it's pushed it into the subscription service, how Nintendo themselves put in an FAQ that like, you know, it's fine that we're shutting this down. We have Switch Online. It's like, no, that's not an answer. Monetizing backwards compatibility is not an answer. It should never be an answer, okay? It can be an option, if I want to not buy a million and one games and have a huge library, if I want to have a subscription service that I can tap into and get a selection of games curated by you, Nintendo, that's fine, but it shouldn't substitute the option to purchase games. And not only that, but purchase games on other platforms. I don't know about that either, Chief, but those are just my thoughts, my, my thoughts on what's going on with Nintendo and how I'm very displeased. So with that, I look forward to seeing your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you share a similar sentiment, a similar frustration for this company? Fire away. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.